If I, if me, if I make a deal with the devil, I'm on the top of the Hollywood Hills in a mansion getting d***ed up, blowing lines of smoke in an infinity pool. I ain't f***ing being a small town cop in the f***ing shady side. What's going on everybody? Welcome back, Justin here. As always, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I really do appreciate uh, it. Please show your support for my videos, my channel, and my algorithm by liking and commenting down below. It helps out more than you know. YouTube appreciates engagement, so the more people like and comment, the more YouTube wants to share this video with others who might have interest in it. And then the channel grows and we all meet new friends. And we're all a big happy family and we have a, a bigger community here, so like and comment down below and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get into today's video we're gonna be talking about fear street 1666 it's finally here we finally made it to the third movie uh, i'll link all of my fear street videos down below my reviews i covered the music i covered the books i covered everything been along every step of the way it's, it's been so much fun following this whole saga from before the movies even came out i was talking about the books and how they might relate to the movies and i broke down the music and i reviewed the other movies now we're here to talk about 1666 um I have a lot of thoughts on this, and ultimately, guys, I, I am I'm a little I'm a bum. I'm bummed out. <laughs> I'm a little bummed about this movie because I I just didn't love it, and it really kind of makes me sad. I this was the one that I was looking forward to the most, and it's just a bummer. I did not love this movie, and I'm gonna break it all down. I do have some positives, and we're gonna start out with the positives because, um, just like with 78, I have my complaints about, and I think. Upon further rewatches, I'm actually going to like 78 a lot more. But when it comes to 1666, um, uh, I, 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 have some, I have some thoughts, okay? First of all, for the positives, I gotta say the costume design, the location, the era, the camera work, the way everything of in, in those categories was handled was great. Some of the lighting is really nice. The night shots were great and the, uh, the practical effects and uh, some of the performances in the big church scene. I'm gonna do some spoilers in this review. Just, I'm putting that out here right now. There will be spoilers. The eyeballs on the floor and some of the practical effects in there and the lighting in the church and uh, the costumes were great. The locations, you can tell they were really working with uh, a pretty small, like a small-ish budget. Um, they had some money to throw around, but you can tell they had limited locations. Everything took place in just a couple locations, and uh, they did a good job with that. I love the era, and the score was great, too. Um, I really did like the score and the aesthetic and the costume design and the sets. All of that was really, really nice, um, and I have to say that, <laughs> and that's, that's, a, that's about it until we get into the my negatives about this movie and i have a few and it makes me sad it's not as fun to review movies that you didn't love that's why the majority of my reviews i i talk about movies that i love the movies that i want to recommend and uh although i would recommend this just kind of be if you've already seen the other two i mean you kind of have to watch the third one but if this was a standalone movie, I'm not sure if it was something, if it's something that I would recommend on its own. I'm gonna break my negatives down into three categories. The casting, the rules and exposition, and the ending. Now we're gonna talk, we're gonna start with the casting, which is something that before I saw the movie is one of the things that I was most excited about. The fact that they brought back a lot of the cast from 1994 and 78. I remember when I watched the trailer for 1666, it was probably one of the more interesting aspects that I was looking forward to, having the cast uh, return in this different era. And after seeing it, I think it was the biggest mistake the director made. I think it's the biggest mistake of the entire production of 1666. By carrying over the same cast, you're basically just plucking characters from another movie who you've already gotten used to and just plugging them into this different world. And for me personally, it was impossible to be sucked into, to be absorbed into this new world that they're attempting to create by seeing these old actors. When I'm seeing Simon and Kate and Dina, I'm not seeing Sarah Fear and her friends and the people that grew up there. I'm not seeing this whole new world that they're trying to create by them plugging in actors that we've already seen. I know they were trying to convey the fact that this is uh, Dina having the visions and now she's <laughs> crossing her eyes upwards at the end of the movie like she does, but it makes no sense and it really took me out of the movie. It's sort of like, um, you know what it really reminded me of is all those cheesy 90s movies where people get thrown back in time and they're just like, whoa, where are we? 
and, and I know we're seeing characters we love. There's Simon and Kate and Dina. It just didn't make sense for them to be there. We have spent three movies building up and talking about Sarah Fear. I want to meet Sarah Fear. I want to see her. I want to see her family. I want to see the people that condemned her. I don't want to see characters that I've already seen. That's not true to creating this new world. I was. It was impossible for me to be absorbed and invested by seeing these same characters. It just did not work for me at all. If anybody's seen the movie Stay Tuned with John Ritter back in the day, uh, it was about a guy who bought a cable TV system from the devil and he gets sucked into the satellite and with each channel he changes to with this magic devil remote, he gets sucked into a different world. Um, all these satanic versions of different like popular television shows and like Black Knight with Martin Lawrence or even something like Army of Darkness. It just took me out of it. I just didn't buy them in this world. And in fact, the for the few small moments that they actually showed the actress who was playing Sarah Fear, and I think it was intentional that they use an actress that was somewhat reminiscent of Feruza Balk in The Craft. Why not have her play Sarah Fear? Let's get to know her. We spent all this time talking about Sarah Fear and we didn't even get to meet her. If they can show you and introduce a bunch of new characters in 78, and that's why that worked, by the way. If it was just Dina and Kate in 78, it would not have worked. We have spent three movies talking about and building up Sarah Fear as this character. And when we finally get to meet her, well, we don't meet her. We get to see Dina. And she's looking at Simon and Kate. And I know we all love those characters. But you can't just take characters from a previous movie and plug them in there and expect us to be in this world. It just did not work. I did not feel absorbed into it. And while we're talking about the cast, we got to talk about their performances. Let me ask you this. Did anybody believe one accent that was in this movie? Aren't you even a little curious? Not that accents have to be perfect or they'll make, a break, make or break a movie, but... God, if it didn't take me out of it watching these actors struggle with these absurd accents, it was horrible. Uh, Kiana Madeira, um, the girl who played Hannah or Samantha, none of the accents were even close to being believable and that, that just made me further removed from this world. And when we get to one of the biggest emotional scenes in the entire movie, when Sarah Fear is going to be hung, the thing that three movies have completely and utterly built up to, like this is the big moment of all three movies. And I felt nothing. I felt nothing. The performances were just not there. Kiana Madeira, I'm sure she's a fantastic person, but she cannot pull off a super emotional performance. Her and her friend, like think of the, think of how you would be. You're getting ready to be hung and killed, murdered for something that you did not do, for something that you were not guilty of. And if you look at Samantha's character or Hannah, whatever her girlfriend's name was, cause I just didn't care. You're getting ready to watch the person you love, your soulmate, you're getting ready to watch them die in front of you. And you're just like, And I want to see snot bubbles, man. I want to see drooling, upset. Like, I, I didn't even see a single tear drop from Keanu Madeira's fa face. Like, there was no emotion there. You're getting ready to die, and she's just like, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just going to die now. Think of some actresses that you've seen in movies that give amazing emotional performances. Think of Natalie Portman and everything you've seen her from, or Kerry Washington and Django or Amy Adams and anything she's ever done. Jennifer Lawrence. Think of the crying scene in Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey or any Leonardo uh, DiCaprio performance. And I'm not saying that people in Fear Street need to be Oscar winning Leonardo DiCaprio, but you can give me something. I'm a guy that it is easy to make me fucking cry during a movie. It is easy. They're not terrible actresses, but when it comes to strong, emotive, emotional scenes, you couldn't even squeeze out a single tear and your character's getting ready to be strung up and killed? Nah, man, that's a no for me. And let's get into the exposition, all the rules of this movie. Half of this entire series, specifically talking about 1978 and 1666, I'd say the majority of the movie, of both of these movies, is just talking at us, explaining rules, talking about this and the blood and the bones and da 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 If you really think about what happened in 1978 in that movie, what did you learn from that movie? You needed about 
five minutes of information from that entire movie. The rest was filler. Yeah, there was some cool stuff in 1978. You got to see the origin of the Bagman killer. You got to see like a decapitation and hear you know hear her the uh, Ruby Lane's mom talk about her. But the only thing you really learned and needed to know in the entire 78 movie was, hey, there's these bones and you need to get them back together. That's it. 1666 tried to tell a better story, but it was still pretty thin. Still pretty thin. Just blame it on the lesbians for bringing the devil to the town. And that's basically it. And now let's get into the good stuff. And by, by good, I mean G-O-O-D-E. Let's get into the goods. Okay, let's talk about this. This could, let's talk about this because this is something that really, really bugged me. And then we'll get to the end where a bunch of stupid bullshit happened. Um, you sell your soul to the devil, okay? You can have anything in the world that you want. You say, hey devil, I'll give you fucking soul every year. We'll put a goddamn name on the wall and uh, you'll get your blood and I'll get whatever the fuck I want. You're meaning to tell me the only thing you can do out of all of your wildest dreams is become a cop in a small town? That's what you want? You want to become a small town cop and push around teenagers? Are you kidding me if i if me if i make a deal with the devil i'm on the top of the hollywood hills in a mansion getting domed up blowing lines of coke in an infinity pool i ain't fucking being a small town cop in fucking shady side stupid dude it makes no sense and then from then on the whole third act the entire climax is so convoluted and stupid and repetitive Going back to the mall, I get it. It was kind of cool seeing the neon colors and seeing some of the old killers, but we've already seen that. It was the weakest climax of all time. And let's talk about this whole blood thing, okay? Where you drop a little bit of your blood on the bones or you come in contact with the stuff and all of a sudden these demons want to kill you because I, I guess it's just because Sarah Fear was real pissed off when she died and just said the words, I'm gonna make you regret this or whatever. It's so stupid, it didn't make any sense, it was convoluted, and when they squirted them all with the blood, and they all started hacking away at each other, it was just so stupid, and such a waste of a climax. We've already been to the mall. We've already watched the gate not shut. We already watched Ruby Lane in the first movie get shot in the head. We've already seen all this. It was repetitive, it was anticlimactic, and the way they ended everything, the way they wrapped everything up in, in such a quick, effortless, stupid, anticlimactic way was so dumb. All the whole time, hundreds and hundreds of years of deals made with the devil and hundreds of people dying and being tortured and hung and demons. And the thing that brought down the entire 300 years of devil's curse is just, <clears throat> I stab you. Just a stab to the eye. That is one of the biggest pet peeves in me of movies when the big bad, when the big antagonist, when the baddest dude, the bad guy of the movie gets disposed of in such a simple, stupid, and unpunishing way. Like in a big action movie where a guy just falls down or dies of a single gunshot or something like that. Like why does Kate get her head sliced into 15 pieces of bread and Sheriff Good is just think. And I know they tried to make it really cool with all the music and the editing and having Sarah Fear's face in there. They tried to make it cool, but all she did was stab him once. That guy should have been ripped apart in the most creative death of the entire fucking series. The kids get their eyeballs ripped out earlier in the movie. I mean, goddamn, there's kids getting decapitated. Kate got her head sliced into 10 pieces. And after all the fucking hell that this guy has caused, he just gets stabbed feels pain for like a second and a half, everything poofs into dust, and then fucking what's his name, the kid just goes, she did it. That's it. Like, what? This movie was such a letdown. I, I, I just, I don't even know what to say. This was, this, <laughs> honestly, it's not how this review was gonna go. It kind of turned into a rant, and... I'm sure I'm going to piss people off who really loved it, or I know this isn't as structured as my reviews normally are, but that's going to be a no for me, dog. I just didn't, I didn't care for it. And they left a little cliffhanger at the end where the person pulls the book off, but they managed to cram a few 90s songs in the last few minutes. But ultimately, I did not like this movie. For my rewatchability score, three, maybe. 
out of 10. What do, you, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm done ranting. I have a bunch of videos. I still have to shoot this weekend, so I'm going to move on to the next video. But So guys, that's all I got. I really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit, and I think we're done here. Stay weird. Remember to always be yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I love movies. Gosh, I love movies. I love watching them, and I love making them.